This is Ferro Cement House Build Part 9. We will be placing mud on our metal armature in this video, but before we can get to that, we need to figure out how many fibers to add to our half bag mixes, and also we have to deal with some bad sand that I've purchased. Uh, this was a new supplier, the old one went out of business, and it appears that, that what they sent me home with is unwashed sand with a very high organic load and a very high like silt sediment content as well but anyways we're gonna be messing around with washing some sand in a bucket before we start mixing some cement all right i want to talk about the mix <laughs> so i bought fibers and uh i've never used fibers before and so one pound of fibers uh is good for a cubic yard right so you wonder, well, how much is in a uh, bag of Portland cement? Because the, the mix I use is two parts sand, one part Portland cement. So it gets a little complicated, but I made some cheat sheets. So this, you know, TXI, you know, uh, type one, two blend is a general purpose, low alkali uh, uh, concrete. And it says its uses are for pavements, foundations, sidewalks, patios, bridges, precast and pre-stressed concrete tanks all kinds of stuff and then uh, uh, the, the feature is after mixing it'll remain for uh, an hour whereas type 1 by itself is only half an hour and so the internet says 40 uh, 94 pounds is one cubic foot and these weigh uh, 92 and a half pounds so you know close enough right but one cubic foot is 1,728 cubic uh, inches. And when I put my tape measure to this thing, you know, I, get, I get 16 by 24 by five. And so when I actually, you know, it's rough, I get 1,920 cubic inches in the bag. So I assume a cubic foot of concrete does not include whatever air space is in between the the cement itself so according to the uh the the data sheet it says for a general purpose mix you mix one part cement two parts sand and three parts gravel so from experience i know when i take a bag of portland cement cut it in half and i fill up two uh, five gallon buckets with it i'm a couple inches short per bucket right and so I'm, I, I use, uh, that's how I measure my sand, is I, is I use a bucket of sand minus a couple inches from the top. And so if you add uh, one part cement, which is two buckets, uh, two part sand, which is four buckets, and, uh, and three part gravel, which is six buckets, <laughs> you get four and a half cubic feet of cement out of each individual bag but if you're, you know, you're doing the math here uh, the, the wrong math like what I the way my brain works is you have uh, two buckets is a cubic foot uh, plus four buckets two cubic feet plus three buckets so you you, you get six six cubic feet uh, of stuff when it's mixed together equals four and a half cubic feet you know because gravel has a lot of air in it sand has uh less than gravel but more than cement probably and cement has less than both of those so you know by, by their mix you uh six bags of cement would get you one cubic yard and so six bags of cement one cubic yard one bag of fibers because they're a pound per bag but the fair cement mix is one part cement, two parts sand, and uh, just rough numbers. If one bag of cement is a cubic foot, then two units of sand added must be three cubic feet. So 27 cubic feet divided by three cubic feet, you get nine, uh, nine bags of cement per yard. So if the fibers are one pound per yard, one pound divided by nine, uh, you know pounds I, I don't know I had to switch the metric I'm you know because I'm just not smart enough to remember all the conversions <laughs> to give me something useful to turn it into ounces so I can use my scale so I went to grams so uh, 
you know, it says right on the bag, 454 grams per yard. 454 grams divided by uh, nine bags of cement is 50.4 repeating. Since we mix half bags, that means I have, uh, you know, I'm gonna put 25.2 repeating grams of fibers per every half bag that I put into my mixer. And then we get to my sand. Uh, my, my sand supplier uh, went out of business and when I called him up he said oh yeah we don't have any product left we're selling off whatever we have and you should try this other place and this other place is a uh, landscape company and I found some problems with the sand let's go look at that the reason why I'm sensitive to the quality of sand is because we have a local sand resource we have a lot of sand at the creek by by our property and both the cases I know of where people use this sand to do ferro cement work, the ferro cement has failed. Uh, so let's let's just look at those cases real quick before we go into messing around with uh, washing sand. The first case I want to look at is this cistern that fills from this garage on the side. So I actually helped build this cistern. Uh, Bob, he, who has passed on, we we did this one with creek sand. So I know. For a fact, <laughs> we use creek sand, and it it lasted for a bunch of years. But then eventually, the concrete started failing and falling off, and now the cistern you know can't hold water; it needs repair. But look at this hole that that happened. I mean, the sand literally did something to the cement where where the cement couldn't act as a binder and hold it together. It it just it's like it's it's washing out through groundwater or I mean not groundwater but it's just it's just crumbling the reason I'm so sure that it's the sand which is failing is because another one of my neighbors did this uh, beautiful you know terraced retaining walls holding back his landscaping and when he worked through all of his uh, bought construction grade concrete sand he uh, decided to finish up with some creek sand and look at this transition right here you can tell exactly where he ran out of the good sand and started using our local resource and you can see where it starts spalding and falling apart and and all this you know so that that's 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 my my evidence for why sand is important and why I'm sensitive to low quality sand so this sand is a uh... I mean, it looks like the like the real deal, but it's it's just behaving a little differently than I'm used to. So typically, when you get your uh, concrete sand and you open up uh, your tailgate, it, it falls. But this stuff, when it dries out, it it it's really hard. It takes takes a fair amount of work to to crush it. So the first thing I did was I sorted it through eighth inch screen to see what sort of stuff we had, and it's got you know. Nice little gravel that'll fit through my hardware cloth real easily, but it has a ton of organic matter. Like everywhere you look, there's there's mulch and stuff. And I think this is a product of of them not being careful when they're switching from. Okay, this is this is coming from the landscape supply. They're not being careful when they switch from moving mulch to moving, you know, concrete sand for people. Anyway, I put sand in here, added water, shook it up just to see how much sediment was in it so this has been sitting here for four hours maybe four and a half hours and it's still super cloudy but i got a, a line of sediment finally so this of course is not the scientific way that you test sand you know what you do is you you send it off to the lab for a sieve test and they would tell you you know the classification of all the different particle sizes in the aggregate but th this was just meant to help me like visualize and guesstimate how much silt and sediment was in this stuff. And in my mind, it failed. And that's why I decided to go ahead and wash it uh, so I could use it. The rest of the sand that I haven't washed, that's just going to become backfilled because I don't trust it. So I get about a half a bucket of sand. Right, so this is a little bit more than a, eh, it's a half a bucket. Close enough, right? I'm only doing that so it's not so heavy once it's full of water to set it up. So I got my water hose. And I, I flood it completely. 
But I use the pressure of the water to help me make a slurry. So I'm at the very bottom of the bucket, and I got everything in a whirlwind of water, the whole half, half bucket of sand. So as I, as I wash this sand, what you get is this uh, like cream coffee look of all the silt and sediment. You also, you know, all the organic stuff floating in it. You know, it's, it's just a mess. I just start dumping it off. And so like, as I dump it, there's no grit at all in the top stuff. Uh, feel. And then I, you know, I'm doing this two times. So. Maybe I'll do it three times. See what happens. So we still have a uh, coffee colored, the creamed coffee colored look to it, but it's not quite as bold as it was, and still more organics floating up. See all this organic stuff? So we're reducing it, but there's still going to be a quite a bit of organics in here. I'm going to go ahead and rinse it one more time. See, I'm not really waiting for anything. You know, everything <laughs> that's heavy is just at the bottom already. So I'm, I'm going to lose some of my uh, very fine stuff. But, you know, I, I have no idea how they, how they wash sand in an actual commercial setup. So I'm just screwing around. Okay. Yeah, so we're right, the sand's right at the top, so I'm gonna slow down. I don't wanna lose too much of the fine stuff. I'm sure if, I, mean, I don't know, if you had two cores of a, of a sand, that might be bad for the concrete too. I don't know. I'm really, I'm brand new to actually thinking about <laughs> mixes. I've always just taken it for granted. So, there's my wash sand. So this is the pile of wash sand. So once I've washed the sand, it starts to feel and behave more like what I was getting from the previous supplier because uh, he was an actual construction supply house and so you know he would he'd tell you uh, the, the quarry you know what city they were mining the sand from and this you know it was coming from Decatur or whatever I'm gonna take a, a sample of this then this is the sand pile that we were working from this is the more historic sand. <laughs> we quit using this because the pigs got in it and tore it all up and whatever. But So we have the, the old style sand and the new style sand. And this just, the new stuff, it feels, once it's washed, it feels more like the old stuff. You know, it's, it's super wet right now, so it's not running, but let's see how that just dumps off. I don't know. Maybe I'm wasting my time. But it's an experiment. So I've been doing some reading on sand and uh, and what what the desirable properties and what the, the undesirable properties are. So this uh, I downloaded off the internet. It's chapter five of the design and control of concrete mixtures. And chapter five is titled Aggregates for Concrete. <laughs> so I'm going to read some uh, highlights. Some variation in the type, quality, cleanliness, grading, moisture content, and other properties is expected. 
Aggregates must conform to a certain standard for optimum engineering use. They must be clean, hard, strong, durable particles free of absorbed chemicals, coatings of clay, and other fine materials in amounts that could affect hydration and bond of the cement paste. Normal weight uh, aggregates should meet the requirements of the ASTM C33 or AASHTO M6 or M80. What, what those are, are, are uh, like internationally recognized standards for the material. You know, I downloaded some of them. I think one is, is like the highway department and another one is some international uh, standards organization. What's interesting about standards is there's not really a set standard for what should be used in ferro cement. You know, the, the sciences haven't been done. The uh, Ferro Cement Society of India, however, is working on Ferro Cement specific standards. So keep an eye out for them. These specifications limit the permissible amount of, uh, uh, I can't ever say this word, uh, deleterious substances and provide requirements for aggregate characteristics. So uh, deleterious means, I have it written right here, causing harm or damage. So substances in the sand that can cause harm or damage uh, need to meet specific standards, right? You need to limit them the best you can. The cement paste requirement for concrete is related to the void content of the combined aggregates. During the early years of concrete technology, it was assumed that the smallest percentage of voids was the most suitable for concrete. It is now known that this is not the best target for the mix. The amount of cement paste required in concrete is greater than the volume of the voids between the aggregates. The amount of paste is necessarily greater than the void content in order to provide workability for the concrete. Right? So our uh, one part Portland cement to two part sand mixture is probably a pretty rich mixture, but it gives you very good workability. And you can just rise that cement right to the surface when you're done by working it. The fine aggregate must not have more than 45% retained between any two consecutive standard sleeves. So, uh, sieves. Sieves. <laughs> so that's the test I was talking about earlier, the sieve test. We can actually scientifically count the particle size and how much percentage goes through each, uh, uh, what's it, micrometer size screen, okay? The maximum size of coarse aggregate used in a concrete has a bearing on the economy of the concrete. Usually more water and cement is required for small size aggregate than for large size due to the increase in total aggregate surface area. So more water and cement is required for smaller size aggregate. So that's a, another reason why the uh, fair cement mix is a little rich on the Portland cement. But in regards to the economy of working with fair cement, since you're doing, you know, a thin shell of, of concrete, you know, it doesn't matter if your mix is more expensive because you're using so much less of it. It doesn't matter if you're, if you're not uh, saving money on cement because you're actually saving money on total volume of material, materials used. So this next book I want to look at is Fair Cement by Stanley Abercrombie. He gives a really good explanation of what ferrous cement is. Just what is ferrous cement? The prefix ferro indicates iron or steel, so it is obviously some combination of metal and cement. It is in fact still reinforced concrete, but ferrous cement and reinforced concrete are not synonymous. All ferrous cement can be said to be reinforced concrete, but all types of reinforced concrete are not ferrous cement. Specifically, fair cement is a type of reinforced concrete which uses wire mesh rather than heavy rods or bars as the primary part of its metal reinforcement and which uses sand rather than a mixture of sand and stone in graded sizes as the aggregate in its concrete mix. A concrete mix containing sand alone as its aggregate is commonly called mortar. The resultant product can be a shell of surprising thinness, durability, resilience, and when properly shaped, strength. 
The structural effectiveness of any reinforced concrete, including ferro cement, depends on the almost miraculously fortuitous fact first recorded in 1870 by Thaddeus Height that steel and concrete have close to identical coefficients of expansion, swelling at exactly the same rate when heated, shrinking at exactly the same rate when cooled. Thus, they can be permanently bonded together as a single material, utilizing the best structural characteristics of each. Still has the tensile strength necessary to sustain stresses uh, created in a state of tension, while concrete has the compressive strength necessary to handle the stresses of compression. All forms of reinforced concrete take advantage of this happy coincidence, but whereas most reinforced concrete can be thought of as a mass of concrete in which steel rods have been inserted for help in taking tensile stress, fair cement with a relatively high proportion of metal to concrete can be thought as a fabric of steel which has been packed and coated with concrete for aid in taking compressive stresses and in protecting the metal. Fair cement, in fact, often acts more like steel than like standard reinforced concrete. Hit it with a hammer, it rings like a bell, and that's true. Next time I'm filming out at the house, we'll, we'll whap on it. You can hear that baby ring. Uh, but you, you get the point. Let's do some fair cement work. All right, so I'm going to split my bag in half so I can uh, do my little half half mixes that I do. Uh, yeah, these bags are two feet long, and the one foot mark is right uh, at the top of cement so I just so this isn't the most scientific way of getting a half a bag but it's the easiest way I know of oh. alright then I use the these bags so they sit on their own so just to prove the point that this is about half a bucket I'll dump it in there I I, I don't do this every time because it makes so much dust and I just try to avoid all that dust but I'll do it I'll do it for you Okay, so half a bucket of cement is, I mean, a half a bag of cement is almost a bucket. It's just minus those two inches or so. So that's one part. And then with the sand, you know, I fill up the same level, sometimes more, but I try to match that. All right, I like to start with uh, a part of sand. Just to prevent the concrete from sticking too much on the dry, on the dry uh, mixer. Just to get the sand work to the back. Cool. You think that's cool, baby? Uh huh. Baby. Cool. So I got to help her today. She's loading up our wash sand, getting us our second part to put in the mix. Oops. Whoops. Just try to aim for the bucket. Can you get it? Good. Lift with your legs, baby. Why? Gotta be real strong. Oh. Alright, that's part two. additives uh, the fibers I had decided I wanted to use 25.2 grams let's five grams or zero twenty 
four. Twenty-five, some change. Let's just Okay. Oops, point seven. Overdid it. And lose them everywhere. Okay, whatever. Alright, so we always use uh, some of this concrete glue, the uh, the acrylic stuff. So let's see. Um, it, it wants you to use uh, one third of your liquids being the glue, which that's not really what we do. We, we use this to help on uh, adhere our cold joints together, but also as a bit of a, of a uh, concrete conditioner. What I found is just a, a few glugs of this helps make it all creamier and uh, a little stickier, you know, more workable for the fair cement application. So I'm just gonna put, this is how I use it. I go glug, 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 glug. Glug, 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 glug. Oops. And that's all I use. So with these fibers, I don't know if I need to break them up or if they break up on their own. So I'm just gonna dump them in. The data sheet said they disperse perfectly all by themselves. I have no clue what I'm doing. I'm just gonna add them slowly. What if I should add these dry? I might try that next, see if what it does. But I got a feeling we'll get a sense of how well it works once we start doing the mud. Oh! Oh no! <laughs> Um, I lost my bucket. Okay, I'm gonna poke. You already have two buckets. Uh. Huh. Well. No, I lost this little, uh, Tubware thing into the, the cement mix, which I think is hilarious. Okay. Back to it. Right, so this, this bottle is uh, older, but it's got better instructions. So as, uh, you know, bonding different concrete together or using, uh, you know, resurfacing old concrete, it wants you to use uh, uh, one part cement, two parts sand and then however much of this is necessary to make a slurry, and then you, you brush it on. But since we're trying to get into some cracks or whatever, what we had been doing is, is just spraying it in there and then working the cement on it. And it seems to work, but maybe, maybe I should do it the way the instructions say. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'm just gonna do it the way I do it. So, I'm just gonna fill up the little squirt bottle. I'm gonna do it the wrong way. So my mix looks a little bit uh, wet. I'm gonna grab a, a handful of it to see. I don't know, it's, it's a little wetter than I, I typically like, but it's holding its shape pretty well. And wow, those fibers, I don't know, can, can it focus on that? Do you see sparkly of the fibers? They really have dispersed everywhere, so I think we're good to go. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to tackle is I'm going to try to fill this little beam in here that I, I built. And I power washed this and did tons of work, but this was hard to get this clean. Uh, but I did my best. Uh oh. Fogged up. Oh, so I'm just going to try loading it. Yeah, quite a few fibers are getting stuck on the outside, but I think they'll be a-okay. Yeah, 
Yeah, this mix is a little wet, but it's not so bad. All right, so I'm just working the mud in, pushing it in deep as I can. And then I, you know, I work it a little bit, make sure it's in there. And then you gotta get it to settle. Just by tapping on it, get out some of those bubbles, and then you can rework it. Where is this Macy? I can't. Yeah, yeah, I'm making a, a YouTube video. Yeah, that's why I was talking to myself earlier. Okay. I like to talk to my imaginary friends on the internet. Oh, but it's not yet on the internet. I know, I gotta edit it first and then I'll put it on the internet. But now you kind of do the plotting thing. Well, I just work my way up a little at a time, baby. I'm going to leave this video here. Uh, we're already over the 30 minute mark, so I think that's pretty good. I I really would like feedback if anyone feels like it. You know, uh, critiques, criticisms, that a boys. Like, what do you think about sand? Washing sand. What do you think about fibers? How to use it? Uh, you know, just just whatever knowledge you have, I'd like to learn because that's uh that's my current attitude on ferro cement. But anyways, I'm going to leave you with uh, this. Alright, so now I need to back plaster it a little bit. <coughs> Why are you talking to my imaginary people? I always talk to my imaginary people when I work on something. So... You always, always do that? Mm-hmm. Touch this part? Oh yeah, that's fine, baby. Um, why not the cementy part? Well, the cement has lye in it, and you can get a a chemical burn. It starts off, feels all soapy, and that's actually the the your fats in your body coming out, the your own lipids lubricating your hand. Isn't that weird. going a little bit farther because I'm worried you're not going to go farther. Oh, you're going to go farther. Mm-hmm. Dad? Dad, Dad? Mm-hmm. Is it okay if you work your way from there to right there? Oh, well, yeah, baby. I'll do. Dad? I'll work my way around. Mm hmm Um, why is this thing shaped like a peanut? Well, I shaped it that way because uh, I thought it would be attractive. And, and what does attractive mean? Um, like it would look good. And I, and I think it's and pretty weird. Yeah, you like it? You think it looks good? And I think it's weird. You think it's weird? Yeah. Uh-oh. Is that good weird or bad weird? Good. Oh, good. Because I love peanuts. Yeah. And so they call it the peanut peanuts. All right, I need to get in here, little baby. Yeah. Scoot over. Why do you need to get in there? Oh, so I can backfill some of this. 